Hello everyone. So we're now in the period of Gemini and we're going to talk about how this time calls us to really look beyond the dualistic nature of reality. And if you remember the episode on Pisces, which was a lot about duality too, uh, here we're going to look at it more directly, more metaphysically, especially in terms of the fundamental basis of the material world. The material world, the physical world around us, being something which implies immediately a dualistic experience. Because everything here which has materialized physically is a result of creation or creative energy. Creative energy requiring two forces, two uh, polarities in order to materialize. So this relates to the sexual mysteries and kundalini positive masculine and negative feminine forces uniting in order to create. So creation is dualistic by nature, but since we don't comprehend creative energy and what it is in the inner worlds, uh, we're often lost and identified with the manifestations of creative energy. Okay, and we get lost in duality because we don't understand the causes of it in the inner worlds that come from the spiritual worlds. And this is part of our soul's journey. It's part of everyone's journey as uh, this Gemini part within us all to self-realize and master this dualistic human experience. And practically speaking, this relates a lot in the more elevated and practical understanding of all this, metaphysically, this relates mostly to astral projection, which is the, the zodiacal sign for this practice, because it's through astral projection which we can acquire intimate understanding of the relationship between the spiritual world and the material world. Okay, and for Gnostics and for Buddhists, um, this is one of the most significant times of the year because Gemini implies a lot of forces that can help us with astral projection, which is also related to Gemini. And uh, also, this is the time of Sagadava, which for Tibetan Buddhists in particular, this is the most important time of the year. And it implies even more energies that can amplify our spiritual practice. And with that amplification, um, also multiplying or peaking at the full moon. Uh, so I made a video on Sagadava. I'll leave it in the description below. Uh, but before we go into all of those uh, astral metaphysical um, understanding, let's zoom out a little bit and look at Gemini more generally. So just like astral projection, Gemini is a challenging sign to understand fully or to comprehend and it's often one of the most misunderstood or falsely interpreted signs uh, because its nature is pointing towards the nature of reality or the self as being dualistic and as with anything that is dualistic there are a lot of things that seem contradictory or paradoxical now there's nothing wrong with this uh, reality is paradoxical and contradictory. Uh, that's not the problem, though. The problem is our lack of intelligence in comprehending the dualistic nature of reality. And we mostly do this because ego itself is also dualistic by nature. Because ego is non-physical form that has been created, right? But if we identify with the creation of ego, that's when we get lost, that's when we can't control it, that's when it, we are a slave of it. And since ego is dualistic by nature, uh, then it always, we get this sense of wanting to always choose one side of any given uh, opinion, perspective, belief, etc. Right? And we get stuck. 
saying this is bad, this is good, this is right, this is wrong, etc. Um, philosophically, for example, we could say God exists and or God does not exist. These statements, both of these statements, are reflective of a very low level of conscious understanding. Both statements have their own level of truth, depending on the state of uh, consciousness from which they were expressed. In other words, in higher understanding, or for someone who is not stuck in duality so much, uh, they can easily comprehend that both statements are true at their own level, if that makes sense. So the problem here is that we do not comprehend that reality is multidimensional, multifaceted. Reality has many sides and layers of truth, like an onion. But because we have this compulsion to think or be identified with thought, then we easily choose one side of truth instead of embracing a multi-layered understanding, a synthesized understanding. This is why uh, nobody agrees with anyone these days and why everyone's at war mentally, spiritually, emotionally, mor morally, etc. So this dualistic nature typically has uh, two sides of expression in Gemini. On one hand, they can be very intelligent and the air element quality gives them a lot of mental space to explore ideas, perspectives and problems and coming up with solutions and working with others very well. Um, having a clear picture of different perspectives, considering them all in order to find a better solution for things. But the imbalance here, or in other words, any more unconscious Gemini, um, there is basically doing all of that intelligence of the mind too much. Uh, there's a great saying, I can't remember who said it, but intelligence in the service of madness, right? Being stuck in the mental sphere too much. So if we only use the mental air element of thinking in order to solve problems, instead of using the fire element of the wisdom and intelligence of the heart center, then this is where imbalance uh, takes place. The heart is the real place to guide the intellect in order so that it can synthesize superior understanding over any types of dualistic problems. But since Gemini sees so much of the opposing beliefs or conflicting emotions um, a lot, uh, they may easily get trapped in them and forget to listen to their heart, their being. But if they can understand this aspect of using the heart by learning not to identify with the many things that are going on in their minds, then they can become very reasonable, intelligent and grounded people making confident decisions uh, and fully informed um, choices in life that are based on the power of the superior part of the intellect uh, in combination with their real heart's desires, which guides the intellect uh, through it all. So since Gemini is also ruled by Mercury, you'll see some similarities here related to Virgo, since Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, which essentially symbolizes that this sign's um, intellectual capability has a close connection to perceiving many faces of truth um, and understanding it, but then not jumping or, and exploring other sides of truth, you see. So its mental nature perceives truth, um, and then it wants to also comprehend the opposite side of it as well, which it, is a big challenge, you know, and it's part of the Gemini's purpose to comprehend why they experience life so intensely in that way. So Geminis can suffer from becoming um, overly intellectual about things, and the answer to this is to practice meditation. How to be attentive, how to be aware of oneself fully, to learn how to be ever watchful of oneself 
in self-observation so that we do not be consumed by thinking or worse, trying to find a sense of self from thinking, from identifying with thinking. Our true identity has nothing to do with thoughts, opinions, beliefs, because most of these things have arisen from identification with material experience. Okay. But of course, uh, more or less, everyone is identified with some kind of mental thought forms. Right? So it's not just Gemini's, uh, it, but it's just that mm, it's more likely in the population of humanity that Gemini's may experience this more intensely. See, And so Gemini's may find themselves uh, working through a lot of uh, double personality traits, we could say, and it makes them also a bit unpredictable, maybe to themselves uh, and also others. In other words, a Gemini may decide something for themselves quite passionately one day, uh, but another day they decide completely against it. And we all sometimes go through this more or less as well. Uh, for example, Maybe we choose uh, one career path one day and the next day, uh, you know, we completely reject it. So good advice for Gemini is to keep in mind that whatever we choose to do or think or act in life, whatever choices we make produce an opposite force within us. For example, if we want to travel a lot, eventually there will be a uh, this feeling to stop traveling one day. If we choose to marry someone, maybe there will be forces uh, telling us to be single, you know? If we choose to study a degree in one topic, there will be forces making us lose interest, right? Businessmen who try to become rich for many years eventually realize they're happier with less money. If we choose to walk the Gnostic path, there will be many forces telling us not to walk it. So this is life. This is the nature of ego within us, especially if we made choices based on ego. And this is not a bad thing. It just requires intelligence, you see, to meditate on both the reasons why we made a choice in the first place and the reasons behind our subconscious repressed emotions and not to identify with either end of this polarity but to meditate in order to understand both sides and, and what it the real message is behind it and to add to that the solution is found more in not so much fighting oneself um, especially like using sheer willpower or forcing oneself to stay on some path we chose but the real solution is to make sure that we make choices in life that are in line with our being, with our higher purpose. And of course, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, my being told me this, or I am following my being. It, it takes, ideally, it takes several years to understand what that really means. Um, and of course, this relates to the video on uh, birth, death and sacrifice. We have to understand those three aspects first, right? Um, death implying psychological death, uh, birth implying transmutation, and sacrifice meaning bodhicitta or Christ-centrism to help others. Um, if you can understand those three, then you start beginning to understand what it means to follow our being. Um, which, of course, it takes time and study, um, and we can also understand this through contemplating the heart center or heart-based teachings. So it does take time to fully master this, but I would say it doesn't matter how much we are in darkness or how lost we feel. Uh, we can very much still uh, begin following our being in this moment because we still have uh, a connection to our conscience, which tells us through our heart. It's those feelings that we feel that uh, have no doubt behind them. It just feels right, you know? And then if we do that and act according to our higher will, then we won't mind at all when we feel 
opposite forces of ego telling us to do something else. We won't mind because by stepping into your true calling, into your real being, you enter a dimension beyond mind, beyond creation, beyond time, beyond ego, beyond duality. Right? And you step into a dimension of consciousness that speaks to you more eternally, in the heart, totally free from fear, doubt, skepticism, worries, anxieties, etc. Because you know this is what you're meant to do. And this all relates to uh, why Gemini is connected to the arms and also the lungs, which points to the dual nature of two wills within us, two hands, two opposing forces that we all, not just Gemini, we all have to master. Not so much by means of fighting, uh, but by union, cooperation, integration through connecting with the fire of the heart, right? So this is why there's great potential in Gemini too, because Gemini is air element, but the more fire they can bring, uh, they can be, if they can realize this fire, they're very capable of uh, using it. And you can also understand if you've been following the past few episodes, uh, we've gone from Aries, right? At the top of the head to Taurus in the throat, now Gemini, uh, with the lungs and arms, and you can get this sense of feeling that um, we're approaching uh, Leo, we're approaching the heart center and really understanding uh, that intelligence through uh, studying this zodiacal system in order, you see. So in a more conscious Gemini, you'll find they can work and communicate with others very well. Uh, they have amazing and intelligent ways of collaborating with others because within themselves, they also know how to work with oneself. But in a more unconscious Gemini, it can be the opposite, right? They can fight too much uh, for one side of a perspective, perhaps, and they can fight for their own opinion and even get irritated when they feel others aren't listening to them. And the real reason behind this can be found when meditating on the symbol of Gemini, which is the twins, which really need to work with each other. And we become irritated when we can't get these different parts of ourselves to work together. In other words, when our different psychological eyes or egos, our own psychological city clashes within us too much. And this can externally express as being irritated with others. But ultimately, it's because they're irritated with themselves for not being able to find a more broader and balanced solution or perspectives to problems or the way, uh, you know, we view the world. And so this is why the teachings of Gemini are very relevant for humanity's current level of consciousness because humanity uh, expresses and reflects uh, this inner world, uh, these, these different parts or different parties, maybe like political parties, all against each other uh, and really don't understand each other, right? So the solution here is learning to balance the mind with the heart, to balance Mercury with the sun, which again is done through meditation, bringing conscious awareness, consciousness to our thoughts, thinking process, emotions, beliefs, etc. So self-observation, non-identification, and remembering one's own inner being is all part of that. So the key of soul practice can really help us also to separate from our thoughts and just observe them. And so all of this can manifest in a Gemini's life externally as experiencing two extremes in different times of their lives. Sometimes they live in comfort uh, and at other times they have to endure a lot of misery. Uh, sometimes they're very successful, at other times uh, their projects or plans fail. So although that may seem like a negative aspect, it ultimately makes Gemini's perhaps the most dynamic people of the zodiac sign and 
very capable intellectually with an ability to learn new things quite quickly. And a more embodied or conscious Gemini can see both sides of things easily. How a good thing can be bad and how a bad thing can be good, depending on uh, the circumstances or situations or uh, emotions uh, of any given uh, part of life. So even though Gemini may seem like a challenging sign to be born under, it also has great potential to master oneself. If one can really begin to learn meditation and know oneself intimately and find their purpose, then their life can become uh, very clear and joyful and uh, they have more freedom to explore the different zodiacal parts of our being. Right? And interestingly, the opposite sign of Gemini is Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. And Sagittarius, uh, as we've seen in that episode, symbolizes directness and bluntness, honesty, sincerity, right? It's the archer, it's direct, it goes towards something without thinking about it. It's not afraid to take risks, right? It just goes. Uh, so these are ingredients which Gemini needs in order to become more decisive, more quicker, um, to act on the impulses of the being a little bit more, right? To stop dreaming and thinking and start doing. And it will help them to know what they want and connect to their spirituality and their heart more. As we saw in the Sagittarius episode, uh, that sign has a tendency towards religion and philosophy and asking the bigger questions with a higher perspective of things. And with also uh, Jupiter, the ruling sign of Sagittarius, representing truth and justice. So Sagittarian energy can teach Gemini energy what really matters in life and not to let their mind focus so much on insignificant and mundane problems. So it's more about teaching this dualistic aspect within us to focus more on what actually matters, such as appreciating life, such as finding and knowing oneself intimately, understanding our real purpose and how we can help others through that, and acquiring more intimate, spiritual, philosophical understanding of how our mind and body works, right? How this uh, human machine uh, actually functions, okay? So, there are numerous practices uh, that we can begin to study and develop with our skills of meditation, but in relation to Gemini, the focus here is particularly related to becoming conscious of the dream state, of the astral plane, the part of us internally that is the astral world that we are connected to. And you can reflect here a little bit um, from what we've been discussing, that the more we become conscious and competent and really understand our dream state and the astral plane, we can better understand ourselves psychologically by understanding the language of our dreams and the many meanings uh, we can take from just one dream. So dreams are not always clear uh, and they can teach us to remain open-minded and meditative towards our inner world and our relationship with it or how it works or how it controls our external reality. So the Gnostic astrological practice for this sign is astral projection. And it's taught that during this time, the spiritual masters from the inner worlds uh, related to Gemini as well, devote themselves to teaching humanity astral projection. For those who are asking or seeking it, of course, which fits in with the teachings of Gemini because astral projection ultimately shows us that we do not live in a singular reality, but as a human being, we encompass two worlds, the inner and the outer, the internal and the external, and in this case, the astral and the physical right? The spiritual world and the material world. And it's unfortunate that most of us 
feel, at least subconsciously, that the external world is more important than the inner world. And we don't realize there's a lot of limitation here. So, you know, we could uh, reflect on this now. We do a little exercise, like, look around you. How much can you perceive with your physical senses? It's very limited, right? Probably just the room that you're in. That's all you can perceive. But within, you have an entire cosmos to explore if the inner senses are developed, of course. And it's in these inner worlds that a certain intelligence from our being can be acquired in the matters of understanding our life's purpose and who we actually are as a being more intimately and directly. And so I want to emphasize one thing that is the cause of both people's failure in astral projection and also the cause behind the nature of Gemini in us to get so lost in dualistic thinking. And you can probably guess what it is. It's quite simple and a little bit cliche spiritually. Um, you know, why is it that we do not listen to our heart and get trapped in inner conflicts and contradictions so easily? Because of fear. The mind does not want to let go or surrender to the superior intelligence of the heart. It is too superstitious or suspicious and skeptical. The mind gets in the way, you see. We're too uh, fearful of the being, in fact. So again, it points to this uh, connection with the mind-heart intelligence. And the exact same principle applies to astral projection. We fear it because we think too much. We think too much <laughs> about astral projection. So I'm not saying that astral projection is uh, bad to think about or study. It's, uh, it's necessary, but there are, are limits. You know, you can only think about it to a certain extent. The rest is practical and uh, the rest has to be practiced. And through overthinking, we create a sense of fear and self-doubt, which is absolutely useless and a complete obstacle for this esoteric work. So again, it's about this balance between mind and heart, balance between theoretical and practical, balance between the subjective imagination and actual reality. So we don't understand that uh, astral projection is a very, very, very natural part of our experience as consciousness. It's natural. And for anything that is natural, it does not need thought, fear, ego, etc. It's like teaching a baby to walk for the first time. If that baby thinks and theorizes about walking, uh, maybe he becomes a professor in the study of walking, uh, then this baby is much more likely to be a terrible walker because he's calculated in his head all of the egoically imagined dangers, possibilities, fears, etc. And when he goes to actually try and practice it, uh, he fails. So this is how thinking can also make us very, I won't say stupid or dumb, but you know, unintelligent or unconscious, right? Through unconscious identifications with negative thoughts. And nature is very clever because when we're babies, we don't have this unintelligent way of thinking and therefore we learn to walk very easily as babies. We learn an entire language, in fact, and the many uh, conditionings of uh, social uh, behaviors, etc. So, as babies, we connect to instinctive intelligence very easily. So if we want to learn, we have to be like children, right? We have to be like babies and uh, understand how to be receptive to certain teachings. And it's the same for animals too. To get things done, they don't think, right? Birds know how to fly and build nests. Uh, bees know how to uh, make honey and pollinate. Uh, lions know how to hunt. If they had intellect though, there's a big chance they would not be what they are meant to be 
and they could malfunction. And in exactly the same way, so too should we know how to access the inner worlds through astral projection every night. But we don't because we, we overuse, overthink the intellect. So we should really have this ability as if we are a bee on a mission to harvest honey from our inner God, right? To gain wisdom from within directly, actually touching, tasting, feeling and being in the inner worlds as real, if not more than the physical world. Uh, and we can really live a life like that, totally guided and connected from within if we choose to do so. So in honor of this time during uh, Sagadava, during Gemini, uh, the next video on this channel will be about an hour long class on astral projection, uh, where I put a lot of the core ideas and practical understanding all into one video. Uh, there will be two main practices in it, which I feel are most effective intuitively. In other words, uh, the teachings or practices that help us to understand the mechanics of astral projection, how our human machine allows it to happen, and how we can learn this more intuitively, rather than just following like a step-by-step -step procedure and, and hoping that works, right? Uh, but for now, while you wait, uh, I've made a playlist with all of my astral projection videos that I've made over the past couple of years, and uh, they're in order of what I feel should be most effective for most people to follow. Uh, I recommend going through these videos this week, and then next week you'll get a more synthesized class. So good luck, and hope it helps.